I am that one by the highway on the road to Jericho when I heard that Jesus of Nazareth was coming down the road I cried thou son of David have mercy Lord on me then someone said he's calling you and I met this Nazarene I am that crippled man in the way I am the blind and lame I am that dead man buried Till someone called my name That sinner defeated and so unclean Who now has victory All I can say is I had no hope But I met this Nazarene, a stranger joined to disciples on Emmaus Road. With authority, he talked of Jesus, so they invited him home. But as he bowed and blessed the bread, their blinded eyes could see they ran to jerusalem and told the rest we have met this nazarene i am the one before you now who humbly testifies blind and lame Dead in sin, but I heard he was passing by. I cried unto him, Lord, how could you love someone like me? And all I know is I was blind, but I met this Nazarene. I am that crippled man in the way. I am the blind and lame I am that dead man buried Till someone called my name That sinner defeated and so unclean Who now has victory All I can say is I had no hope but I met this Nazarene All I can say is I had no hope But I met this to 
his own. But if not, will I choose to love him anyways? But if not, will he still be worthy of my praise? His great glory I'll proclaim if he delivers from the flame. But will I serve him just the same? If not, I say, O oh Lord, I trust in you with all my heart. I pray, O oh Father, let thy will be done. But what if his will is not to grant my heart's desire in order to bring glory to his Son? Will I still delight do my Savior's bidding when on my behalf he does not intervene. I know that I will praise him if he answers, and when his hand of blessing can be seen. But if not, will I choose to love him anyways? But if not, will he still be worthy of my praise? proclaim if he delivers from the flame but will I serve him just the same if not I know his grace will always be sufficient I know his strength my weakness will perfect I'll trust when it's beyond my comprehension that my needs he will supply and my paths he will direct but if not i will choose to love him anyways but if not he will still be worthy of my praise his great glory i'll proclaim proclaim if he delivers from the flame but I will serve him just the same if not if not
same book. Jesus is 
Oh, read them in. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. All right. The Painter family. Y'all come on up, ladies. can't keep secrets over there you have mics (laughs) 
winding road to the old familiar markers of the mercies I have known I know it may sound simple but it's more than a cliche there's no better way to tell you than to say God's been play and I can see I've cried some bitter tears but I felt his arms around me as I faced my greatest fears you see I've had more gains than losses and I've known more joy than hurt as his grace rolled down upon me under to sleep each night and though I've had my share of hard times I wouldn't change them if I could through it all God's been good for God has been my father my savior and my friend his love was my beginning and his love will be my end I could spend forever trying to tell you how everything is but the best that I can say is this God's been good in my
just begun and I can't help but praise the Lord for all he's done. Even though I don't deserve to live, my life has just begun. Brother Wade and Miss Victoria's class. Woo! Their debut night. I don't know. They've already done it. They've already done it before. Y'all come on up. still my favorite though I think I don't know maybe because I meant it I don't know all right we have two instrumentals now so Miss Marissa if you'll come and then after that Miss Carrie I coaxed her into bringing her trumpet so so she said maybe have to hold your ears but it's loud so we're gonna we're gonna see
Yes.
This is one we haven't done in a good long while. It's all Chris's fault? All right. <laughs> By the way, that's Chris's fault. <laughs> and the echo is on. <laughs> We're going to have to move in. There is a blood that cost a life that paid my way. Death its price when it flowed down from the cross. My sins were gone. My sins for God. There is a grave that tried to hide this precious blood that gave me life. In three days, he breathed again and rose to stand. So I come to tell you he's alive, to tell you that he's Christ, every tear that falls. So I come to tell you that he saves, to shout and to proclaim. That he's coming back for you. But the blood, but the blood. 
his precious blood that gave me life in three days he breathed again and rose to stand in my defense I come to tell you he's alive to tell you that he dries every tear that falls so I come to tell you that he saves to shout and to proclaim that he's coming back for you so I come to tell you he's Thank you. Great job, everybody. That was a lot of music, too. We'll be fast tonight. We're in the book of Acts. Acts chapter number 15. Acts chapter number 15. Acts 15. This is probably probably a longer message, but I think y'all can get it. It's an important subject, and uh, I think God had it for tonight, so we're going to go on with it. But we can we can make it brief. Acts chapter number 15, and uh, we're talking about. The apostles, the disciples, moving on in the church, they have brought in uh, two, two new people to work with them, Judas and Silas, and uh, and these were these are godly men. They have uh, they've been uh, vouched for, and we come to uh, verse number thirty-five, and it says this, chapter fifteen, verse thirty-five. Paul and Barnabas continued in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others also. And some days after, Paul said to Barnabas, let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. They've already been on a missionary journey. They've already been to these places. Paul said, let's go back and check on those churches. Let's go check on our brothers Let's go see how things are at those churches. Verse number 37, And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought not good to take him with them, who departed from them, who departed from them from Pamphylia, and went not with them to the work. And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other. So Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus. Paul was a great missionary, and he had been on many journeys already, but he's got an issue now. The man that has gone with him every time, Barnabas, he says, let's take John Mark with us, and Paul says, no. Whatever happened... He can't let it go. He won't let it go. And it was, it was such tension between them, they split up. I don't know much about John Mark. We know that his mother's name was Mary. He wrote a, he wrote a gospel. He wrote a book of the Bible. He possibly was a convert of the, the apostle Peter. I don't know anything about his father. Uh, I don't 
recall reading about his father if he has a father maybe he's not saved maybe he's not a good father I don't know but for whatever reason Barnabas wants to invest in the life of a young man he went with them before and I picture him to be 16 or 17 years old and well many of you know what 16 year old boys think like because you were them uh, some of the rest of you possibly married what was at one time a 16 year old boy you know what 16 year olds were like some of the young people aren't there yet but life is difficult sometimes life is hard I don't know what what Mark went through he seemed like a good kid he went on a missionary journey they went to this place and if you remember back in uh, chapter number nine I think it was chapter number nine I'm going to turn back there and read that. 9 verse number. Uh, no, that's the, we're going to go there in a second. 13. Chapter 13 is where they went uh, the first time. 13, 13. Now when Paul and his company loosed from Paphos, they came to Perga and Pamphylia, and John, departing from them, returned to Jerusalem. What had happened in this chapter was they they encountered a man a sorcerer who withstood them remember we talked about that a few weeks ago and uh, he was determined to not let the man that was in charge of the city hear about Jesus and Paul confronted him and this was quite a spiritual battle and through all of that John said I don't I'm going back home I'm going to head out he's just a kid though they're doing grown-up work by the way and I'm not saying that uh, kids shouldn't learn how to work but there's a difference in a, in a 16 year old and a man no offense 16 year olds I was there too but there's a difference on all all levels and you're just not quite ready for everything that's why you still have uh, parents or grandparents or somebody that guides you teachers and we never know everything but there's a difference and he wasn't ready for it and he left and Paul says he ain't going with us because he left us whatever happened we got no time for that my question is this in in churches today it's not just here it's everywhere across our country where where do the young people go where are they at for one reason or another or another they have departed some for maybe valid reasons but it's a sad statistic we need young people we need teenagers and we need them as they grow into as you grow into uh, your life after school you need to determine that you're going to stay with God. That you're going to have your own faith. That you're going to trust in God. Not just have the faith of your parents. Not just have the faith of your uncle or whomever. Your pastor, your youth workers, a Sunday school teacher. It doesn't matter. You need your own faith. And Paul didn't have time for it. Paul said, I'm, we're not doing it. We're not taking him again. And Barnabas took him now what I can see from that is Barnabas wasn't willing to give up on a young man because of one time whatever it was he said we're going to give him another chance we're going to stick with him and he took him with him now for Paul to jump in on that and sometimes we're hard on young people now if if they're tearing stuff up hey let them know we should have rules we need to keep order but there's proper ways that we can we can address someone without running them off right now that goes on any level I don't want to see dissension in church I don't want to have fighting in church we're looking for the same thing if we're talking about doctrines we don't even have to fight about that the Bible clearly states if you can prove it in the Bible then that's what we go with we don't need opinions we don't need a fight about stuff this boy departing from them it, it wasn't a doctrine 
Paul said, we're not taking him. Barnabas said, I'll take him because we're going to invest in him. But where we was going a while ago in chapter 9, verse 26, remember when Paul first was converted? Remember when Paul first uh, met Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus? And uh, he was blinded, and then he waited for three days to find out what was supposed to happen. And then verse number 26 picks up in that story. When Saul was come to Jerusalem, he essayed to join himself to the disciples, but they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way and that he had spoken to him, how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. Barnabas was the guy that said, hey, Paul, Paul's with us. Paul's going to be part of us. Paul's the real deal. I'll vouch for him. I've been with him. They said, we don't want nothing to do with this guy because he'd been killing Christians. He's awful. He's a murderer. This is a trick. Barnabas said, no, we can trust him. Bring him into the fold. Put it all on me. I'll take it. He did that. I guess Paul forgot. I guess Paul couldn't remember what he came from because he said, we're not giving him a chance. We're not giving him another chance. We gave him one and he ruined it. Not going to waste my time with that. What about, what about you, Paul? What about us? What about your past and my past? And we say, I'm not, I don't have time for that. I don't have patience to deal with that. Why do you think God feels about you? How do you think God has been patient and waited for you? But we'll fast forward to the end of the message. And we were, we were in this, uh, these verses on Wednesday night, 2 Timothy chapter number 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Remember that Paul was in the prison uh, in Rome. This is it for him. He'll soon be beheaded. He's going to die. He knows it. He wrote the verses where he said, uh, verse number six, I am ready. I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at this day, not only, not, not to me only, but and to all them that love his appearing, do thy diligence to come shortly to me, for Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica. Uh, Crescens to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia, only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. Because Barnabas didn't give up on Mark, Paul said, at the end of his life, Mark's profitable for the ministry. I need to see him one more time. At some point, they made up. Mark turned into a good guy, a great guy. God's using him. I don't know what else he did. He wrote the gospel of Mark. We've got that. I'm thankful for that. But Barnabas didn't give up on him. Paul did. Where, where do young people go? What happens to young people? I don't know. They may choose a life to move on. But we need to give them the chances that were given to us. We need to be like Barnabas. Barnabas was a leader. Barnabas... We don't have a lot of information on him, but he was instrumental in a lot of things. He said, hey, no, we're going to let we're going to let this Paul guy. We're going to give him a chance. We're going to let him prove himself. But he's a good guy. And we're going to let this kid give uh, give us. We're going to give him a chance. We're going to let him prove himself. I think he can be something for God. That's what we need to be. Encouragers, people that give people opportunity to serve. He didn't remove the rules. He didn't, he didn't remove doctrines. He wasn't breaking down walls, but he said, these people, we're going to give them chances. We're going to give young people chances because we need them to carry on. Paul's going to be gone. 
He's got young guys that are carrying on for him. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the service that we had this morning, for the service that we had tonight, for all of the songs that were sung tonight. Lord, we do thank you for your blood. We do thank you that uh, you've been good. Thank you for all the blessings that you give us. And thank you for letting us gather together in your house and to be able to sing to you and to hear songs of worship to you and to have a Bible to be able to read and Lord to just uh, speak with you whenever we want and however we want and I pray now that you would bless the rest of this service in Jesus name. Amen.